Hello, Roman Onigan with you. In this video, we will start to study diagonal. Earlier, I mentioned that there are three motive types of waves. The first type of wave we have already considered is the impulse. The second and third types are leading and ending diagonals. In this video, we will deal with the leading diagonal. Another name for the leading diagonal is a wedge. So if you hear the name wedge in the market, don't worry. This is the correct name of the leading diagonal. It should be noted that earlier these models were called diagonal triangles, but then Robert Prechter, a world-famous specialist in wave analysis, removed the word triangle from the name of the diagonal to avoid confusion among beginners who sometimes mistakenly attributed diagonals to the family of triangles. Therefore, I believe that this is a correct and promising change that will not allow people who begin to study wave analysis to get confused. So what is the leading diagonal? First of all, I want to note that this model is usually a precursor of powerful movement and it always appears in either the place of wave 1 of the impulse or in the place of wave A of the zigzag. That is, if we schematically show the upward and downward impulses, the leading diagonal can appear only on the position of these waves, that is, wave 1. And if we schematically show the downward and upward zigzags, then the leading diagonal can appear only at the place of wave A on the zigzag, that is, here or here. If you recognize the leading diagonal on the chart, it may be a signal that soon we will have a powerful uptrend or downtrend, and this can be used in trading, so you can try to look for a point to open a short or long position. Now let's look at the rules. Rule number one, the leading diagonal as well as the impulse always consists of five main waves. And just like for an impulse, it is always denoted by the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. As for the internal structure of the waves of the leading diagonal, it is similar to the impulse. That is, the first wave of the leading diagonal is the motive, the second corrective, the third motive, the fourth corrective, and the fifth wave is again motive. Thus, the wave formula of the leading diagonal is as follows. Third rule, wave two never goes beyond the start of wave one. Fourth rule, wave three always goes beyond the end of wave one. The fifth rule distinguishes the leading diagonal from the impulse. According to this rule, the fourth wave of the leading diagonal ends in the zone between waves 1 and 2. In other words, if you draw horizontal lines through the tops of waves 1 and 2, then wave 4 will end between these horizontal lines, that is here. If wave 4 ends above the top line drawn through the top of wave 1, then this model will take the form of a non-leading diagonal. It will be just an impulse. And if in its construction wave 4 goes below the horizontal line drawn through the top of wave 2, then the structure of the wave will be broken and this model will not be the leading diagonal at all, but some other model. Sixth rule, wave 5 of the leading diagonal is never truncated and always goes above the end of wave 3. We remember that in the impulse the fifth wave could be truncated, but in the leading diagonal it is impossible. The fifth wave is always above this level. Seventh rule, the third wave in the leading diagonal is never the shortest in comparison with waves one and five. And in conclusion, we write down another rule that we have already said. The leading diagonal appears in the wave one position of impulses and in the wave A position of zigzags. Now we have learned all the rules that are relevant for the leading diagonals. Now let's see how these rules are implemented for the downward model. A downward leading diagonal also consists of five subwaves as well as the upward model. And the internal structure of the descending leading diagonal and the ascending leading diagonal are the same. Further, the second wave of the leading diagonal is always shorter than wave one. Wave three always goes beyond the end of wave one. And the fourth wave of the leading diagonal, descending, ends in the area between the lines drawn through the tops of waves one and two. The fifth wave of the leading diagonal always extends below the end of wave 3 and is never truncated. As for the third wave of the descending leading diagonal, it is never the shortest in comparison with waves 1 and 5. As for the position, the leading diagonal always appears either in the place of wave 1 of the impulse or in the place of wave A of the zigzag. That is, the set of rules for the ascending and descending patterns are similar. And now I would like to show the leading diagonal on the chart. Traders have come up with a convenient designation for the leading diagonal. That is, through the vertices of waves 1 and 3, and through the vertices 2 and 4, the generating lines are drawn from the beginning to the end of the model. The same is done with the downward model. Generating lines are drawn through vertices 1 and 3, 
2 and 4, and because of this, the leading diagonal is very easy to distinguish on the price chart. When there are a lot of numbers and letters on the chart, and we see some large markups, it's very convenient to highlight the leading diagonal by lines. And it brings clarity to the markup and the picture of the market. So we have clarified what the initial diagonal is. In the next lesson, we will deal with the last of the three types of waves developing in emotive mode, the ending diagonal. If you have any questions, you can write me an email or leave a comment under the video. Thank you for listening. Once again, this has been Roman Onigan with you. Watching this video course is the easiest way to master the theory of wave analysis. The easiest way to learn and practice is personal training with me. A link to information on personal training is under this video. Click the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you.